almost like I felt my life flashing in front of me for those couple of seconds. Everything was just going black and everything just started to spin. At that moment, I knew I needed to get to the hospital. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's your girl Michelle. And as you can tell by the title of the video, I'm gonna be doing another story time, opening up, talking about my topic, pregnancy experience, which almost led to death. I feel like this video is very necessary because I wanna be able to spread awareness to other women who may have no knowledge of this situation or who may be going through it right now to be able to comfort you and to let you know that you're not alone. So if you have never been pregnant, or anything like that, then this video may not be for you. But if you're somebody who has been pregnant, has had complications or any type of difficulties, conceiving a child or fertility issues, then this video may be a little helpful for you as well. In this video, I'm just gonna talk about my experience, the signs and the symptoms, and my healing process as well. If you're not really familiar what an ectopic pregnancy is, that is basically a fertilized egg that implants itself on the outside of the uterus. Now, as you know, in order to have a successful pregnancy, the egg needs to implant into the uterus. There are other different difficulties that may happen during pregnancy. It can also lead to a devastating situation known as miscarriage. I'm gonna try to make this video as quick as I can, but still very detailed because I really want you to understand how serious an ectopic pregnancy can be and to look for all of the signs and symptoms and not to just ignore so it. This happened to me back in 2013, hence why I'm strong enough and able to talk about it now. If you have just experienced this, it may be really hard to talk about. I wanted to make sure I was strong enough mentally to be able to come on here to share my story it was back in 2012 where i met eddie if you guys have been following me you know who eddie is but before eddie i had a previous child at the time so when we got together you know everything was nice and one of the things that we talked about when we were dating and the beginning of our relationship was having more children that was something that we both wanted we didn't set a time or date but we just knew that that was something that we wanted I want to say a few months after dating I literally found out I was pregnant now one thing about me is that I always find out when I'm early on in my pregnancy only because of the experience with my first child I literally found out I was pregnant within four weeks my body literally just lets me know that something's off or something's new going on and I feel like that's really good because I caught it early so I took a pregnancy test and and bingo it was two lines one line was bright and the other one was a little faint but if you know you know we were happy it brought us a lot of joy it made us you know a little shaken up because we had just met each other but I feel like God doesn't make any mistakes when blessing you with a child so we took it with a grain of salt and we were prepared for a new life together I was still a little shocked after seeing the pregnancy test so I went back and I got a couple of more just to really confirm it not too long after that I called to make an appointment with an OBGYN to really see how far I was and to check on the pregnancy. I was referred to a new doctor from a friend of mine, not too far from the area that I lived in. And at that time I was looking for a different OBGYN because I'm very private and I just felt like where I lived, everybody just went there. So sometimes you just wanna like step out and do things privately. It wasn't like I was hiding the pregnancy, but I just wanted to do something different with this person that I was with. Fast forward, I was able to get an appointment with the OBGYN. He seemed fairly nice. He seemed very thorough. One of the things that I look for when going to a doctor to make sure that the doctor is very attentive and answers all of my questions thoroughly. And I got that out of the first visit. He gave me the estimated due date and he told me to start taking prenatal vitamins, which I already knew because I already had a child. So everything is good for the next couple of days. We're so excited. We're in love. Have another baby. When you find out you're pregnant, even if it's not the first time it's just a it's a shocking yet exciting yet scary feeling it's almost like you're in denial like no I'm not pregnant you know your heart starts to beat really fast but yet you're smiling from ear to ear it's a whole bunch of different overwhelming feelings but beautiful feelings if that makes sense we were just planning and just talking about a whole bunch of stuff names and just possibilities and it was just beautiful and at that moment I just felt blessed I felt blessed that God gave, God gave me a chance to have another baby because it doesn't happen for everybody. So one day we were out and about and I started to experience a little bit of cramping in my stomach. Kind of like when you're about to get your period or during ovulation. I've always been somebody who had like painful periods and my body lets me know when my menstrual cycle is going to come on. I felt a little bit of discomfort in my abdomen, you know, pelvic area, and it was kind of like my menstrual was coming on. I was a little alarmed. I let Eddie know that I was feeling pain in my stomach and he's like, you know, are you okay? Do you want to go to the doctors? 
and I was like, oh no, I'll probably be okay. Probably just like, you know, the beginning stages of pregnancy. I did experience a little bit of cramping with my first pregnancy. It was very short lived. Just kept going on with my D and you know, the next day it came back again. And when I went to go use the bathroom, I noticed a little bit of spotting. Now to me, spotting is a red flag. There's other reasons why you can spot, but in early pregnancy, those are the most crucial times and the crucial stages um, for your body to actually, you know, to hold on to the pregnancy. First three months are really crucial. I got alarmed, I was nervous, and I was like, I'm probably gonna have a miscarriage. I pray to God that, you know, I don't lose the baby, even though I'm so early on preparing for this life. So I was just a spot all throughout the day, which made me have to wear a panty liner. It wasn't heavy bleeding, it wasn't bright red, but it was spotting and it was dark brown. TMI, but it was the dark brown stuff, almost like at the end of your menstrual cycle. I've never experienced this, so I was just like, why am I spotting right now? Is my period coming on? I also heard that you can still have your menstrual cycle and be pregnant. I don't know, it was just weird for me, so I called the doctor. I don't think I got an appointment until the next day, so now it's been about three days where I was experiencing a lot of abdominal cramping as well as spotting. I go into the doctors and he does a quick examination on me, explaining to him like the cramping in the, the pelvic, the abdominal pain is starting to get a little bit worse and it's not subsiding. Now when you're pregnant, you can't really take any medication. I tried not to go that route because I wanted to be natural and I wanted to see what was really going on with my body first before taking any medication. The doctor advised me that everything was okay, that it was something called implantation bleeding, and that sometimes happened in early pregnancy to not worry, to just increase my water intake and to take it easy. When I left out of the hospital, I felt a sense of uneasiness. I didn't feel 100% secure at what the doctor was telling me because as a person and as a woman, I know my body and I know when something's not right with my body. So I wasn't relaxed when I got home. My mind was going my mind was moving really fast and so the only outlet and the only option that i felt i had at the moment was to just google certain things but when you don't know something and you don't have an answer right then and there thank god for google and technology sometimes google can make it worse i just laid down that day and i was i was literally in pain i felt like the cramping was getting worse now i'm going to get into the signs and the symptoms right now my first symptom like i said was pelvic abdominal pain is where i felt it but it wasn't throughout my whole stomach it was focused solely on just one side if i'm not mistaken it was my right side and it was just like a really dull aching cramping pain that would come and go but it was very frequently every five to ten minutes i would get this sharp dull really deep aching pain in one side of my stomach it started to affect my daily activities where i needed to just lay down I wasn't really able to go out and do things because it was starting to become debilitating. The second symptom that I experienced, like I've mentioned, was the spotting. The spotting didn't get any worse. Um, it didn't decrease and it didn't get it didn't get worse, but it was constant. Whenever I would use the restroom or wipe myself, I would notice the dark blood as well as on my panty liner. The next day when I got up, the pain was it was it was extreme and i started to feel shoulder pain that was another symptom that i experienced pain was radiating from my abdomen up into my arm and that's when i felt scared i felt like i didn't know if i was having like a heart attack a stroke you know i was just like what the heck is going on with me this is supposed to be a good time for me and yet it was starting to become very scary and devastating for me so that day i remember i'll never forget it was in the summertime eddie myself my mom my grandma and my daughter decided to go to the fair it was like a street carnival and it was really hot that day my mom called me and she's like oh you want to go and even though i was going through what i was going through i figured if i kept myself busy i'd be fine you know this is gonna go away this is just the this is the beginning stages of pregnancy. Not every pregnancy is gonna be the same. We all drive in one car, they pick us up and we're out at the fair. And I remember my daughter getting on a ride and as I'm looking at her trying to smile and take photos of her, I felt my body getting very weak. I started to feel very faint and very dizzy. I thought that it was because the sun was just like beaming on me and it was just extremely hot, but my legs started to give out and everything just started to seem like sound and seem like it was far away from me. Like I could hear people and it was just like far away. Like it was like I was spacing out, whispered to Eddie and I was like, I don't feel good. I don't feel good at all. I feel really dizzy. I told my mom and they were really worried. They're like, let's sit down for a second. You'll be okay. Heart started to beat really fast. I started to just feel really ill. Like, I don't know. It's almost like I felt my life flashing in front of me for those couple of seconds. Everything was just going black and everything just started to spin. 
at that moment, I knew I needed to get to the hospital immediately. It was quite a while to, before we actually got to the car, which made it 10 times worse because my body was feeling very dizzy and I was holding myself from fainting outside in front of everybody. I probably would have fainted if I had to go a minute more before we got to the car. That dropped off at my house and Eddie was like, we need to go to the hospital. Eddie rushed me to the hospital. We went to the emergency room. We didn't even call the OBGYN. I just went to the ER and I told them, listen, I'm four to five weeks pregnant and I'm experiencing this, that, and the third. They took me back really quickly, hooked me up to machines. They took some blood work to check my HCG levels and they also did an ultrasound. In the hospital, it usually takes a good two hours before you get your results, which made Eddie and I be on pins and needles because we know something's wrong but we're hoping for the best the unknown can cause so much intense anxiety because you want it to be okay but yet you know something's not right with your body all i could do is just pray silently and ask god to comfort me and think be okay when these doctors come back in after about an hour or two the doctors finally came in now i say doctors meaning plural usually there's only one doctor that comes back in to give you your test results when you go to the emergency room. There were three doctors that came in the room and they came rushing in there rapidly. It wasn't like a, just open the door. Like they bum rushed in there, which let me know right then and there, something's wrong. My heart dropped by their facial expression. I thought that, you know, my baby was gone. I had a miscarriage. That's what I was waiting to hear until they told me that I was experiencing something called an ectopic pregnancy, which threw me for a loop. I was just like, well, what is that? I've never heard of that. What is this? And they were talking aggressively and very concerned as if this needed to get handled right then and there. They stated to me that this is a life or death situation, that they needed to do emergency surgery on me, that I was bleeding internally. I was shocked. I couldn't react. I was frozen. I looked at Eddie and we just, we didn't do anything. We All we could do was just look at each other. They're like, you need to do this right away. You're bleeding internally. The baby is in your right fallopian tube and you're starting to bleed internally. We need to do this right away. I asked him to give me a minute by myself so I could focus and um, Eddie and I were going crazy. I freaked out. I'll be 100% honest with you. I was like, I need to leave. I'm not doing any surgery, one, without talking to my mom. Two, I have to process this first. Three, I'm so afraid to get surgery right now, like right today, right this second. I didn't have time to prepare myself. And when I heard that I was bleeding internally and it was life or death, I freaked out. I'll be honest, Eddie and I literally left the hospital. Like we left the hospital, which was probably one of the worst things I did, but probably one of the best things because I didn't feel comfortable with the hospital I was at anyway. I wanted to go to a good hospital that I knew was gonna treat me, give me the best treatment. We left the hospital, I called my mom. I'm not even gonna lie, I smoked a cigarette. I smoked a cigarette because I knew right then and there my nerves were so bad and I knew that the baby wasn't gonna be mine anymore. And so I just wanted some type of relief. I freaked out, I cried, we screamed, and I was just like, I gotta go to this hospital. I'm so afraid. So I called my mom, she came rushing over, and then the hospital called my phone, literally like 20 minutes after, like, you left the hospital, you need to come back now, blah, 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 blah. I already had in my mind where I wanted to go, so I called the hospital, I called a different hospital, which was 25 minutes away from where the regular, the, the first hospital was, and I told them. They told me to go right, come right away. I remember my mom doing like 90 on the highway. I'm shaking, I'm crying. It's literally like eight o'clock at night and I'm just thinking so many different thoughts. Why me? Why now? So we get to the hospital and right away they did an ultrasound. And um, one of the things that hurt me the most through this whole experience was how uh, non-empathetic these nurses were. I understand they may do this on a day-to-day -day basis and they see this all the time, but where's your compassion for a mother who has to lose something, who has to lose a life that's created inside of her. They did the ultrasound right in front of me and they were like, yeah, they're talking now, they're talking in front of me. Yeah, the baby's in her tube, we have to take it out. They told me the size of the baby. They actually asked me if I wanted to see the ultrasound and I refused to, I refused to see it. And the saddest part for me was hearing the heartbeat. I actually heard my baby's heartbeat on that sonogram and I just crumbled because the baby didn't stand a chance at life and I didn't even get a chance to love the baby. Fast forward, they rushed me in. All I can remember is saying goodbye to Eddie, him holding my hand all the way until they put me, took me into the operating room. I remember them telling me to count down from 10 and my tears were just flowing underneath the oxygen mask and I was praying to God and all I remember was seeing bright lights and I fell asleep. I woke up and I felt so empty. I woke up, I felt empty, I felt 
lost i felt broken when the doctors came in to let me know everything that had happened and the care plan and so on and so forth they had no idea how severe an ectopic pregnancy was and i also didn't know that i was going to lose a part of my reproductive either so after he explained everything he told me that the baby was you know growing too big into my right fallopian tube typically a baby's supposed to grow in your uterus you know so with an ectopic pregnancy it can implant itself outside more, more commonly in the fallopian tubes and your fallopian tube is very thin it's very thin so imagine a baby trying to grow in the tube it's going to stretch it which and then if it gets too big it can rupture and it can burst which can then be life-threatening because of too much loss of blood my body was at that state that's how far how that's how severe it started to get for me so my fallopian tube wasn't able to be saved they took the baby out along with the right fallopian tube and that right there just made me feel like something was taken from me i took a loss from a baby but i also took a loss of an organ that i need to be able to reproduce in the future it had to have been one of those saddest days of my life because i didn't expect it to happen if i hadn't went with my gut feeling and went to the hospital i probably would have died in my bed that night if i would have just listened to that first OBGYN who told me it was just implantation bleeding it was very hard for me to heal from I didn't understand it. There was really no known reason or cause behind it. I had never done anything to hurt my body. I did everything right during this pregnancy and yet this is what I got. And so I questioned God and I was very angry. And it seemed like after this had happened to me, I started to see so many women pregnant around me. I'd go to the store, I'd look out my window, you know, I'd go on social media and I'd see pregnancy, pregnancy. So I just wanted to close out the world and shut everything out until I healed and mentally I was okay to push forward again. The doctor told me that my chances of having another baby were kind of low now that I had only had one fallopian tube and I think that's what set me into depression, depression mode the most because yes, I had one child but I had a new relationship with the man that I loved and I wanted to share that and give that to him. I felt like as a woman, we should be able to recreate and give that to our spouse and to experience motherhood. You know, it's it's something that is the greatest gift that anybody can ever experience in your life and you won't know until you become a mother and you feel that child in your womb. So to hear that devastating news, it just broke me. I had to not only heal physically, but I had to heal mentally. And I just took it one day at a time. And I say this, if you're going through this or you've been through this or any taking any type of loss, it's really important to not go through it alone. Make sure that you have your spouse with you to comfort you and um you know don't be alone during this because it'll just break you down even more you need that support you need somebody to uplift you and by the grace of god eddie was there every step of the way he literally cried with me he held me and he told me it's going to be okay we will have another baby he also stated and if we can't have one together i'm fine with just having you i'd rather have you than to not have you at all because of what just happened it took me a good couple of weeks to heal my stitches eventually um dissolved i did have a couple of incisions in my stomach they did it like a laparoscopy which you know they go in through the belly button but i also had a, another incision somewhere you know another incision on my stomach which was very small take it easy i had to rest and you know not lift anything heavy after a while when it started to heal it starts to itch really really bad so be careful not to itch it i just you know made sure to put uh, cocoa butter and Alan wanted to heal it and before I knew it I healed just fine I'm doing this video to let you know that when you feel something's wrong with your body or it's not right with your body go with your gut feeling doctors don't know it all doctors only go what they learned in school by textbook if you feel something's off don't ignore it go get a second opinion third if you have if you've ever took a loss like me and the doctors told you out of their mouth that your chances of having another baby is a percentage I beg to differ. God has the final say so. And if you are not a believer, I suggest that you find higher power and, 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 and give it to him. Because not too long after I healed, I want to say a good six months after that, I started to pray more. I went to see a priest with Eddie. The priest prayed over me because at that time, Eddie was Catholic and I was Christian, but I wanted to see what it was like at a, Christ, a Catholic church. And Eddie brought me there and he said, let's go speak to, the, to a priest. The priest prayed over me. The priest shared a story with me, his testimony, and he prayed over me. And let me just tell you, leaving after leaving out of there with that priest and after praying to God, thanking him first and foremost for allowing me to come out of this situation because I could have been gone and I wouldn't even be able to tell you the story right now. I had to thank him. When I tell you God is an awesome God, 
I went on to having two more babies after this. Two more babies after having an, a ruptured tubal pregnancy and two beautiful healthy kids. In total, I have three children. I'm here to let you know that God has a final say so and if it's gonna be for you, it's gonna be for you. And I'm here, I'm also here to let you know that yes, it's, it's painful, but you're not alone and I feel like it happens to so many different women and sometimes we just don't understand why we don't we don't understand why we can't why the pregnancy ended the way it did but there's always a reason why things happen and i'm grateful to be here today to tell my story it was one of the scariest things i've ever been through in my life it also made me wisen up a little bit more and it also made me pay more attention to my body definitely not just listen to what a doctor tells you pay attention to the signs and the symptoms i just wanted to share with you my scary ectopic pregnancy story to spread awareness to those who may not know who have never heard about it. Let you know that you just gotta take it one day at a time. It gets greater later and you're not alone.